Are you ready to listen to a podcast? podcast? Here comes the Playhouse Podcast. Thanks to Bradshaw and Brian Law Offices. Find, subscribe, and listen. I don't have many friends my age that are grandparents yet, although it's you know completely plausible. My oldest is 20. Oh, my uh, God. All right. I mean, that would be weird for me to be a grandpa, wouldn't it? I bet you uh, I'll put money on it. I'll, put, I'll buy you lunch if in three years you get that phone call. Uh, he'd be out of college and having his first real gig. I, yeah. yeah, maybe. I don't know. I mean, it's like I said, it's plausible. But uh, I was at our cabin this weekend working on a few things. And it's very, I like that environment because uh, there are um, kind of parents like my age that live next to us. There are some younger couples that have places there. But most of these people are retired. Yeah. And they will live there pretty much all summer. And then they'll snowbird somewhere else, right? And as I'm kind of cleaning up, I see uh, his name's Lloyd, uh, whatever. I doubt he listens. Uh, And he was telling me that they have, um, I don't know, you know, it's not a trailer house, but it's like a, it's like a, it's not a cabin either. It's kind of I know what you're talking about. I've seen him off the highway. A permanent fifth wheel, I guess, or something like that, right? So he and his wife have had a place there for 35 years and their granddaughter got her head cut, caught Sorry, caught in the spindles in their deck Mm. and he had to get the chainsaw out and because they couldn't get her head out. Yeah. Somehow she got her head in the spindles and couldn't get it out. And she was wigging out. So Lloyd's got to get out the chainsaw and cut it out. And he was telling me about it and I couldn't stop laughing because all I could imagine was this poor little girl and her hands (laughs) flailing and then Grandpa Lloyd grabbing the chainsaw and having to cut the railing apart to get her head out. Yeah. And I thought, well, this would be a great time to start opening things up for the I Got Stuck stories. There's one in the news about firemen had to come and get a traffic safety cone off a four-year-old's head. Because they were doing construction down the street. She went down there. The guys are on their big pavers and everything like that. She grabbed one of the cones and pulled it down on her head like a hat. And they couldn't get it off her head. Now, it's cute, four years old. But when you're 24, it's not cute. I love the ones that go and that like get, they get wasted and they go to a park and they get in a swing like the girls. Oh, they think the, they can yeah, fit right. The, the little girl, the little boy swings. Yeah, and then they have to cut the rubber off and the you know they have their big super powered scissors from the fire department. My sister, we had a shed in the backyard and it had a a hole about this big, and For she what? reached her little <laughs> fat arms in it when she was younger. And the fat, you know, like bloop, and then you can't get it back in. And she was stuck out there. I had gone inside, didn't even realize. I would walk around the other side, give her high fives. (laughs) (laughs) But she, she was out there for I would say a good half hour, forty five minutes with her arm (laughs) through that hole. And then my grandpa's like, "Where is Emma?" How they end up? They have to grease her up. How they get it back out? No, he just kind of like uh, I don't know how he did it. I think he had like a little hand sand type thing, like a sander okay. sheet, and he just went around and around. I don't know. And it got enough where the friction was less and less. Sadly, she was freed. How long do you think she could have survived out there? I don't know. Days? Yeah, probably. So I thought this would be a perfect time. Your kids are probably in school, so you won't be too embarrassed right now. But and then you can call in on your kids, too. The time you got your head stuck in the banister... The time you got your arm stuck in the cookie jar, somewhere, somehow, you got stuck stories. I got time to take one round of these. So if you want to call now, I'd love to have you on the show. <laughs> I feel like I know I'm getting really, really old when I laugh hard about kids getting their head stuck stories. So uh, we're kind of wrapping up the season at our cabin on Saturday. And one of the older guys that has like a, a fifth wheel, permanent fifth wheel there, he was telling me, he's like, you know, and it's crazy because I'm working hard. Like, I'm by myself. I'm shuffling stuff. I'm cleaning stuff. I'm fixing stuff. I'm purging water lines, stuff like that. Yeah. And this old guy comes up. He's got a, a place back there. He's like, how are you? Where are the kids? What are they doing? And he, start, he goes, tell you the funniest thing. And he shows me out the back window because so I can see his place. His deck is all jacked up, like missing railings and stuff. And he goes, mm. you know what happened there? I go, oh, my God, did a tree fall on it or something? He goes, my granddaughter got her head cut in the spindles. Oh, and I'm like, what? And so he had to take the chainsaw and cut them out. They couldn't get her head off. She was panicking. That's That would be the worst, just to watch them flail like that. How'd you get it in? You can't get it out. Um, d- is Brenna on the line? No. Okay. So do you remember that girl that stuck her head in the tailpipe? Remember when she called? 
her or her I friend kind of do like the, the boyfriend or a dad have the giant tailpipe like no the- where's the text it was at Winstock. don't you remember it was all over the news don't you remember i think i'm trying to the friend I- called in to our show like the next day well, like how do you get a tailpipe that big she found it and then just put her head in it yes <laughs> they could get it out. And they were they were on the Jimmy Kimmel show. Oh, I don't remember this now. Because they were making fun of him. You you okay, don't remember. I'll keep an eye out for it. I'll find the photo. Hi, hi Angie. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Who got stuck? I, me. Oh, where'd you get stuck? It was me. In the laundry chute. Please tell. <laughs> Let's go into this now. Uh, laundry chutes are like eight by eight. How? Well, I was like four and I had this like really awesome idea that I was going to go down the laundry chute and land in something, you know, and uh, it, it didn't turn out that way. How far, down, I, uh, did, how far down did he get? Stuck. Uh, not that far because my, my leg was hanging out, my body was in there, and my leg was contorted. Oh, oh. now how'd they get you? Did they have to like, I'm um, guessing a couple of things. They had to pull you back out the way you came, right? Um, eventually, yes. Uh, but it, yeah, they tried everything. Do you have like that mean older too. brother that tried yeah. to throw clothes on top of you or take a whiz on you or something like that? <laughs> no, no, I was the oldest. So, you know, I was kind of the dumbest at the time. But, How long were you uh, in there, yeah, Angie? So the fire department had to be called and it was amazing. How long were you stuck? Uh, about 40 minutes. Oh man, I'm getting flashbacks to like McDonald's tubes and stuff. I know that feeling. I... How how was your breathing getting labored? Were you panicking? Like, get me out of here. Um, I wanted to get out, but everyone was like, "You just need to stay calm. We're gonna get you out." And I'm like, "Um, okay. Well, I'm stuck here now." Yeah. So. When the fire department shows up and they got to get you out of there, did they have to destroy part of your parents' home, or was it just they just kind of yank no, you? No, thank goodness they didn't. No, <laughs> no. Now I, I don't I don't I'm for sure not smarter than most firemen I don't want to uh, appear that way but this wasn't something mom or dad could just help you get unstuck with they actually had to call the fire department Yeah well by the time they got there between my mom and neighbor and another neighbor they they got me out Yeah right. um, Well they still talk about amazing. you today so Yeah that's good. I'm glad that you could share with us oh, and we're thank you. From now on, whenever you call the show you got to say uh, this is Angie the struck uh, I got the uh, the stuck in the what was it, the laundry chute lady? The laundry, the laundry chute, yeah. yeah. Make sure and identify yeah. yourself that way so we know you're okay. <laughs> oh, sounds great. Thanks, Angie. Have a good morning. I got time for one more of these calls real quick. Hi, Tammy. How are you? I'm doing good, thanks. Uh, who got stuck? <laughs> so my auntie used to do daycare, and she went to make lunch or whatever, and she had the kids all kind of set up so they couldn't get hurt. One of them escaped into the bathroom and took one of the training toilet seats that you'd set inside a regular toilet yeah. Yeah. so they don't fall through and put it on their head. Oh, man. And they couldn't get it off. Oh. And so she calls their mom because she can't get it off, and she's like, you can just leave it there. So this two-year-old walked around with this <laughs> toilet head around their neck all day. Oh, my and God. And when their mom got there, they used like a half a jar of Crisco, greased him up, and pulled it off over their head. That kid didn't panic walking around with a toilet seat around his neck for hours? No, he thought it was cool. We could all only hope to have a go with the flow attitude like that. Like just have a toilet seat around your neck, but go about your business. That's pretty impressive. Plus the unsanitary situation there. You know what I mean? Like that had to have urine and stuff all over it, right? Yuck. I don't think he thinks of that. Well, you would think, but I'm sure she cleaned it up quite well once it was stuck. Yeah. Good story. And Good story. you do anyway because it's daycare. But then the other part of it is you should have seen him try to eat with the toilet. <laughs> 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 And now, another post from Aunt Nora. Below is a video of a turtle gil- getting a belly squeak brush. Note, not the turtle's real laugh. Walk down to the dam to see if I could find one of my own. No luck. Her friend Carol. Wouldn't that be funny if this was the real laugh? Nora says, sure would. That was another post from Cat's Aunt Nora. Put my computer up because this is the laugh she had to make sure people knew wasn't the real turtle laugh. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> oh my god. Is Nora on anything other than Facebook or is that just it? Oh my god, wouldn't that be great? I don't know. I would Maybe. really like to get her uh, her thoughts a little bit more intricately in like Twitter. Is she on the gram? No. No. Uh, this TikToker's mom has a very unique laugh. He had posted it a little bit ago, and then there was so much response about it that they were shopping in Walmart. He's like, let's do it again. Hey, Mom, the people want you to laugh again, so I got to make it happen. Oh, no. Wasn't nothing wrong with last time. <laughs> Look, here's what I, I just want to hear you get a little bit of a laugh out because the people want to hear your joy that your laugh sounds so delicate. <laughs> <laughs> no, there it was. Hold on. What was that? <laughs> delicate laugh one more time. <laughs> 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 Yuck. They're saying that it's only a kazoo. Did she swallow a Furby? I, that's why I thought kazoo at first. I thought she had a kazoo off. <laughs> that is so. Her throat, I, I, my throat hurts for her throat. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. That Imagine makes me living weird. with that woman. We love when you guys come to us with dilemmas because our audience is, a, is an amazing group therapy situation and this is the phone call we took from Teresa a little bit ago. I want you to listen to how she describes what happened when she rolled up to a relative's house. Yeah, so I was going to pick up my son. He was with my aunt and uncle and I parked and I could hear my uncle. He was in his garage, which is also his workshop and he was talking with a neighbor and he was absolutely trashing my aunt, like oh, his no. wife. Yeah, and I he called her some of the worst names I've ever heard. And I always thought he was so nice, and so now I just feel like he's a stranger. Yeah. I'm just wondering if I should tell my mom, because it's her sister. Oh. Or, yeah, or do I just stay uninvolved, you know? I'm usually a watch-your-bobber kind of person. I think that's where I'm sitting right here. Like, really? This is one of those things you just forget, and... Uh... I would run and tell that on the mountain. Hey. I would go tell my mom, like, you need to figure out a way to work it into a conversation because he can't be talking to the community like that about his wife. But that's what if he's not just right. venting? Like, I mean, uh, to tell me you don't About vent. what? I don't know. I mean, but that's like, again, it's none of your business. That's aunt and uncle's business. And hey, by the way, I, uh, it, when you said some of the worst names possible, like, I'm pretty sure we all thought one word first, right? Did he use that one word? Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. pretty bad. Regardless, regardless I, listen, I, I'm going to stand firm on this. Even the way your face looks right now, you're going to stand firm on I this? Because that's pretty and bad. I think it's a really crappy situation, but I don't think it's any of your business. Like you are good. If you're going to go and say something to somebody that creates a problem that hadn't been created until you took motion. Therefore, I think you need to stay out of it. I feel like it's almost a death for you where you have this uncle who is the sweet guy your whole life. And now you're like, wow, you can say this stuff about your wife. That'd be pretty terrible. Yeah, it's almost like a grief I'm feeling of just like, oh, he is not who I thought he was. If you heard your uncle, let's say you go home for the weekend and you roll up and you hear your uncle having a beer on the side of the garage with somebody, but he is dogging out your aunt. Yeah. You're going directly to her to say, hey, Uncle Bill is really, really using some bad language about you back uh, out back by the garage. You yeah. would say that to her? I, I would tell my mom. It's my mom's oh, job. Oh, so you're going to bring a whole a bunch of other people into this complex problem. It's my mom. Oh, yeah. But, yeah, I would. I think that there's nothing more despicable than to speak about your spouse in that way. I think it's kind of embarrassing to do so. Um, I joke about Derek getting poop on our shower curtain, but I would never, like, call him outside of his name or say nasty things about him to the public. I think that that's terrible. So, yeah, he needs to be taught a lesson. Uh, Diana, do you ever find yourself having to scrub your shower curtain, the poop off it, because your husband is such a flinger? No. Okay, Thank good. God. Good. Okay, well, we've already got past that then. So let's say you roll up and you hear another family member just going to town about somebody else, like an aunt and uncle. Do you tell her? Do you tell the aunt? Um, no, I would confront him. You would you would talk I to your uncle. You'd walk right in there and say, "Excuse you, what are you talking about?" Yep. Oh wow. Yeah. I'm not like that. I'm I'm straight up like that. I wouldn't allow that. And and then I would tell my aunt. Okay. Oh, I to him. You're gonna you're gonna rattle his cage, those and then are, you're gonna those tattle. Those are fighting words. No. <laughs> those are fighting words. This, this is your mom's <laughs> sister. And to hear yes. a man whom you've called uncle for so long, you're, like your whole life. And then to hear yeah. him 
say that about a woman you love is gross, right? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yes. I like that you're confrontational because I wake up most mornings looking for a fight. I like that you're like me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Diana. Have a great morning. You too. Take care. Bye. Uh, hey, hey, Becky, how are you feeling today? Pretty good. How are you? Good. Wouldn't you agree this is none of your damn business and stay out of it? So, typically, I would not agree. However, like with this one, I kind of agree with you. Yeah. Um, you agree with who? With JJ. Oh. Because no, pretty much because no good deed goes unpunished. If you, like, start to say stuff, maybe it could turn everybody's feelings around, like, and they, like... You, they might get mad at you for like instigating or, you know, starting something. And yeah, and what if know. you took it out I of context just, and now everybody's arguing that. because of what you said? You know what I mean? Right. And then I would feel really stupid. And I, I couldn't do that. I might do what the first lady said and maybe just confront him. It, depending on like, I don't know. I don't have a lot of uncles, so depending on who it was. If it was the one uncle, yeah, I would be like, yeah, he always talks smack about people, you know, so it's really nothing new. No, there's but- talking smack about someone from the bar, and then there's completely ruining your wife's name behind her back. Like, that, that those are two totally different things. Yeah. So. I I mean, it is, it is a sticky situation, but I would just kind of, like, wait and let it play out a little bit more and see, you know, like what is happening. I'm just not like, looking for a, more problems. Have, I'm not either. And do they have a relationship otherwise than just that time? Yeah, like, there's there's probably something more to it that you didn't see. Probably, yeah, and maybe the right. aunt now can say, oh, he's at this point, then maybe we need to be done and I can move on with life and maybe find somebody that yeah, treats me better. So know. maybe you set her free. Hey, thanks, Becky. I really appreciate your thoughts this morning. I got time for one more real quick. Hey, Felicia. Hey. Are you going to make a problem out of this, or uh, what's going on? How confrontational are you? Oh, I would I would confront the uncle right away as soon as I heard it, and uh. it would be something like how disappointed I am that I thought you were a better person and something to that effect. Uh. Yeah. Well, maybe we'll that could change it. him. Do you think that could change him from not talking about her behind her back? Like. I, I think it would make him realize, like, oh, hey, my niece just overheard me, you know, disrespecting my wife, who is a woman, and she's a woman, and now she looks at me differently. Um, and the fact that if he's saying such bad things behind her back, think about what he says to her face. Yeah, or maybe he yeah, doesn't. Yeah, some people maybe are cowards, just... and they say nothing to each other's face, and then they say yeah. a whole bunch of stuff behind their back. That's what cowards do. And being in your workshop does yeah. not give you full uh, full carte blanche to go ahead and and call you don't think that's like a solitude a fortress of solitude you can say whatever you want no no no. if even if you pick up any marriage book that's like rule number one is you don't talk smack behind your person's back like you can pick at each other if you have that kind of relationship to each other when you're together around people but that's like a number one no no you don't do that in a relationship i tell my kids how awful my wife is all the time isn't that great? <laughs> Kid, I'm kidding. I get, I get what you're saying. So. <laughs> but so yeah, bottom line is yeah. you're, you're going to confront this situation. Yep. Almost yep, everybody him. Almost everybody that's texting in is like, absolutely, you got to talk to the uncle or blow this up. I can't believe I'm the only one that's like, no, watch your bob or don't make a problem. No, I'd go right I feel all mom. alone. All right. Well, hey, thanks, you Felicia. Stick up, stick up with your family. I know you guys are trying to burn through some uh, vacation redemption certificates through yeah. the airlines. You thinking about someplace tropical maybe? No, no, we are not going to do anything tropical right now. Um, not for a long time. Like we had, um, and you know that I've had flashbacks and it is not a good situation when I think of what happened on our last tropical oh. trip. It was, um, it was crazy. I, and I still think that it's unbelievable to this day. We won for some weird reason through a sweepstakes, this trip to a tropical island. We were bussed from the airport on a private shuttle. Um, we had snacks, drinks waiting for us. We get there. This is a six star, if that were even possible, resort. Yeah. Beautiful. And we're shown around, given a private tour. And Derek's like, what did we do to, you know, deserve this? This is crazy. It's just like a random sweepstakes giveaway. And I said, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe we just got really lucky. And so the guy that's running the resort's like, listen, 
I don't do this for everybody, but if you want in the morning, get up early, get your bags packed. We're going to take you to this private beach that only the locals know about. Like, like a setup. Nobody ever goes to it. It's kind of our thing. So we're going to shuttle you over there with a few people and you guys can have a day of fun in the sun. And Derek and I are like, oh, my God, this is crazy. And so we woke Liam up. We got in the shuttle. They bring us there. And the guide is kind of like too quick to, you know, didn't even want to show us around or anything like that. He goes, listen, if you just head through this uh, walkway, you'll get to the beach. There's no way you can get lost. Enjoy your day and I'll see you for um, pickup at whatever time. So we get there and we see some other people on the beach. That's great. That's awesome. Hold hold on one second. Good morning. What can we do for you? Why is she trying to quote that she's from the the M. Night Shyamalan movie Old? I don't know what you're talking about. I was there and I aged 40 (laughs) years in one minute. I've never (laughs) seen this movie. You have. What's your name? Chase. And Chase, you're such a fan. You even knew that it was uh, M. Night Shyamalan Ding Dong. That's because he's in the movie and he's the, like, basically the scientist that um, it's it's just crazy. It's Chase, hard to it, describe. explain this movie real quick. So you, you, you get, uh, you, you go on an island and then you get old? Yeah, everybody aged like 40 years within like a day. And then, like, you got to try and figure out how to unage or what, what happens? Everybody just dies real fast or what? Yes, they die. Oh, well, this sounds like an anticlimactic, uh, stupid movie. A woman got glaucoma within an afternoon, and then she couldn't see, and then her husband couldn't hear anymore because his hearing went bad. And then Lucky the, guy. The most disturbing part was this, like, nine-year-old girl that was there. Or she was, like, seven. And then, before you know it, she's pregnant. And then Ooh. she gives birth. But it's because her body's growing. And then she gives birth, and the baby dies because the baby gets super old right away. It's crazy. Well, regardless, Chase, you're a huge winner today because you know that anytime you hear Cat take somebody else's fabulous life, especially from a movie, and try and make it into her boring life, then you are a winner. What's going on right now? What are you up to? Driving to work. That a girl. Well, you know the rules. You call in, you get the swag. Congratulations. And here we go with the Monday show. Oh, oh. How's Cat? I am great. How's your little man in his, uh, his concussion? Is How's he doing with that? Yeah, he's doing well. He's going in today for his, uh, hopefully, clearance, and he hasn't had any headaches. Uh, he's been reading a lot. He went and supported his team on Saturday in Zimmerman and uh, given high fives and... He felt pretty cool doing that, so that was nice. Uh, and yeah. It's a good angle to see, and most athletes get dinged up every once in a while, and whether or not you're there to support the guys that are still working yeah. for your team is a good learning moment for a little kid. I like that. He's ready, though. He's ready to get back out there. He's ready to play basketball and do all that fun stuff. So uh, he was watching videos of how to protect yourself, but I'm like, buddy, this seemed out of your control. I can only um, tell you this. As a coach and a former athlete, when you try to not go 100% because you don't want to get hurt is when you're going to get hurt. Yeah, the videos were showing people going 100%, but it was like when you see anybody approaching or feel like anyone's approaching, just like... Do a certain move, whatever. But I will tell you, it saved my it saved my uh, my son last year when he took a check from behind into yeah. the boards. If he would have not practiced turning away from it and decided to go in head first, yeah, uh, that could have been a lot worse. So there's a little bit something to having an understanding of when you're in a scary situation, what to do. So good for him. Uh, yeah, we had Wine Nut on Friday. So that was a beautiful event. Once again, uh, gave away designer shoes and uh, KCLD gave away that beautiful Michael Kors purse and wallet. So that was cool. Did they give it away to you? Um, no. Did they give they it away to Tara? They didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, uh, I may or may not have met somebody in an alley after. Uh, then we had the breast cancer walk. That was cool. Raised about $2,000. So that was fun uh, to get on out and meet Brandy's family. Brandy spoke. People are awesome. People Pe- are just so awesome. People in general. There's And we talk about people that are idiots in the news all the time. We talk about bad people on the show because we talk about a lot of relationships. But people just in general are awesome awesome yeah it was uh it was a fun event and it was so quick i think that that was the theme of what people were saying we love that this is 60 minutes long it is like in and out you got the point across and now we're on with our day went grocery shopping after that i watched hocus pocus this is my sweatshirt oh yeah and uh i fell asleep (laughs) all the hype of hocus pocus too and i fell asleep but i was so tired 
So finished Dahmer over the weekend. You did. Yeah. Yeah. I got to get, you get all the way through. No, we finished Cobra uh, Kai. Hey, you jackasses uh, that don't. added. The, I'm just telling you. Don't tell they, me anything. No, they, they talk about it. Freaked me out, man. <laughs> I tried to keep it together. <laughs> but there's a portion of the show dedicated to John Wayne Gacy. Yeah. Of course they were. Of mm. course. Of course they'd slip man, that in for it, you. Man, it, it shook me. Yeah. It really did. I did not sleep well last night because of that. Do you ever wonder, like sometimes I wonder who's listening right now. Are we on someone's radio and they're in their garage doing something terrible? Do you ever wonder that? Never had done one until now. Are we on their Alexa and are they in their basement doing something that will be in the news someday? <sighs> I always wonder I that. Need that kind of pressure. I truly do. Uh, can I tell you a story? Please. I need to tell you a story about a boy. A boy who grew up in humble beginnings mm-hmm. and worked his way up to being half of an idiot morning show. And along the way, that boy decided... He was going to get out of his comfort zone, and he was going to spend $17.99 on a water bottle. And he spent, But I spend 16 on a carafe, and I get railed. This boy, four years ago, spent $17 on a water bottle mm-hmm. because of a couple of things. Number one, it's a clean canteen. Therefore, yeah. nothing will ever come off in the water. Yeah. Plus, it's triple insulated. How many? And years this, ago? Four years ago. Oh, oh, okay. Four years ago, I bought this water bottle, and it's perfect for the show because engineers always want something in here that is capped, yep. so it caps. And it works perfect if I'm going to go somewhere. I can just clip it onto my backpack. And three weeks ago, I brought this to our football game at St. John's, and I set it down as I was helping the team get ready. And as we left that night on the bus, I went, oh. You left it? My water bottle got left at St. John's on the football fields <laughs> three weeks ago. So I pouted. I prayed. I felt like a member of my family had just disappeared. I went and I even bought another water bottle to use here on the show. Mm-hmm. And then this Friday night, our homecoming, we get off the bus and the boys are in the field house getting dressed. It's a beautiful night. And I walk to the field and out of the corner of my eye, what do I see? It was still but my there? water bottle three weeks later. Oh, my God. Nobody picked it up. Do you know how many soccer and football games have been played at Clement Stadium since we played there? Yeah. Like 20. That's crazy. And it crazy. was still there. So I took it and I took it under my arm and I walked it inside and I scrubbed the hell out of it. Yeah. And then I went, I don't know what anybody might have done in that water bottle. So I stuffed it in my bag quick. I took it home and I ran through the dishwasher twice. And right now, with your support, I can say. Oh, yeah. (sighs) Take a swig out of that clean canteen. I have my water bottle back. What a good story. It felt so good. Play this audio because this is... um, I love the middle finger. I love the concept. I don't like when I get it. I'll tell you the last time I got it was not too long ago. But this is a commercial campaign out of New Zealand. And they're raising awareness for getting tested for hep C. And they're flicking off hep C. Hep C, we have one thing to say. (laughs) Stick it. If you reckon you could have been exposed to hepatitis C, there's an easy finger prick test to find out. Oh. And a new cure that for most people takes just eight weeks. Which means there's no reason to feel judged for your past and every reason <laughs> to get tested and stick it to hip C. <laughs> Wait, did he just say, people? can I hear the end of that again? Do they talk about getting judged from your past and then there's a giggle in there? Which means there's no reason to feel judged for your past and every reason <laughs> to get tested yeah. and stick it to hip C. I don't know why the laugh was thrown in there. I think it's more of a visual. visual. Okay. It's a commercial that's running where everyone's just giving the finger. To hep C. Because you can get a finger prick and then find out whether or not you have hep C. And yeah, then, but don't uh, you remember Pam Anderson? Like, she was, like, ostracized for having hep C. That was just, she like. She got it from a transfusion, right? She got it from Tommy. Oh, well, that makes more sense. Okay. So, I, I was like, that's so horrible to do that to somebody. Uh, she didn't realize she was going to contract it. 
No one, nobody would ever do that on purpose. But they pulled this thing off the air because of the middle finger, right? Yeah. Which I think is really funny. Okay, so the last time I got it was three weeks ago. And I'm driving, minding my own business. I was singing to like, I don't know, Ava Max. Okay. You know? And I was just j- jamming out Getting in my it. own world. Yeah. Okay. And I'm driving and I didn't realize I was going not as fast as the person wanted me to in the left lane. So I just move over. I get in the right lane. I see that they want to get around me. So I start driving. She drives past me. She's got her vape like this and just flicking me off without even looking at me. That's the worst. You listen. Coward. Yep. That is an actual cowardly task to flick someone off without making eye contact. Look me in my soul. And flick me off if you're going to do it. So, because I would have done one of my faces, you know, like, mm. <laughs> or I would have like laughed a little bit because it was funny. I don't <laughs> mind the middle finger. I really don't. Uh, there are some people that just get so upset about it. What is one way that you show your disdain at other drivers? I just tell, oh, oh, oh that's, you, listen, don't do this because this is wrong to do, but I will, I will do if it's a 65 mile an hour zone, if somebody is being a jerk behind me, I will sidle up to the car in the right lane and I'll do 56. And I'll do that. Why? For I will do, just because. Listen. Haven't you seen on the news lately know, how know, terrible know, road know, rage can get? I, listen, I'm of the impre- uh, impression that if this is the way God's going to take me, yeah. then that's my, my uh, I believe we all have a clock. And if my clock runs out because somebody's going to shoot me on the highway, yeah. but just don't be a d- dink. I don't want our world to get to the point where we're so woke that we can't do the middle finger anymore. So my uncle, my great uncle, my dad's uncle, okay, he was sheriff for Anoka for decades, okay? And that's how he would say hello. That's how he would say goodbye. And nobody asked for his badge because they knew he was just being a fun guy. Yeah. Oh, he was in his 80s and across the room at a wedding reception. <laughs> you would pan over, you'd feel, you'd feel the middle finger looking at you. And that's how he would say like that's his endearing way of saying hello. I love you. How's it going? So I do that to people too every once in a while. I'll see him from across the room and I'll just flick him off. Really? Because what do you do then? You giggle at it. Yeah. Because you don't do it because you hate somebody. You know, this is the same thing as the ship your pants thing. Yes. You know what I mean? Like they couldn't run the commercial on TV because too many people are too woke. These TV, exe- here's the problem. I ship the- my mattress. N- <laughs> Network TV executives, the people that work for NBC, CBS, or ABC, are all now the people that lead these companies, 70-year-old white dudes. Yeah. And they've been doing it since the 70s when everybody was so uptight. And then the yuppies came through, and then the hipsters came through, and now they don't know what to do, but they don't want to turn off the the big advertiser, right? Yeah. Nissan is spending a trillion dollars with them, and somebody from Nissan might not like it, so they won't air it. I hate that. I don't know. Are we out of the norm? Should we get more woke about the middle finger or... Should we just accept it? I had a kid give me the middle finger this summer. Wow. Yeah, at a baseball tournament. Oh. Yeah. Well, so, so. <laughs> That's unsportsmanlike. Well, he was the, de- like, we were up by like 10 or 11. Yeah. And so I just, I, I, I sometimes I'll call pitches and, uh, and we didn't, my son wasn't catching. So I was calling pitches mm-hmm. and I just asked for three curveballs in a row. And, <laughs> uh, which is kind of stupid. Yeah. But the kid threw them and he missed all three of them by like 18 inches, right? And as he's walking back to the dugout, I was like, that was awesome. So I'm, I'm, I'm about, so I'm not, I wasn't doing it to him. I was doing it to our pitcher. Oh. I'm walking out to our pitcher to meet him at the line or uh-huh. whatever. And the kid just turns around and goes, mm, <laughs> like that. And I was like, what? And it, there's, it, it it increases the funny level <laughs> yeah. when you have batting gloves on. Right. Because it's like a hamburger helper, big finger coming out there, right? <laughs> yeah. He just turned around. And I go, that was awesome. And he turns around and goes, mm. <laughs> and he had the, the teeth grit thing. Yeah. And I was like, wait, wait, you're 14. Why are you flicking me off? I want to take a poll. You good with the middle finger or <laughs> why do you have to look at me like that all right bail what's trending what's trending the nfl's concussion protocol have been under the spotlight the past week so watching this video is very tough my child in about 90 minutes is going to his doctor appointment to get cleared from his previous concussion this is Tua Taga Valoa and he gets tackled and just with the brain and down he goes slung down in his own 48 yard line this is where they realize something bad happened Josh Tupu right here uh, uh-oh. So his hands were um, like something out of a horror movie. They were bent back in ways that 
your hands can't bend. And I I don't know if I would advise watching it, but he's a Miami Dolphins quarterback. And um, it looks like they are releasing a statement very soon as to how the changes are going to happen in the NFL when it comes to concussion pro- protocol. So. talking to the other football coaches Friday night about this, and everyone was buzzing about it. And like we, we go through so much training to understand the concussion protocol and what to look for, especially with the athletes, the youth athletes. Yeah. And, uh, and it was so crazy because right, I was listening to it on the radio. And I heard the idiot broadcasters going, oh, it looks like you might have a sprained finger or a dislocated Ooh, finger. No. And I was like, and here was the worst, is one of those broadcasters was a former player. It, you know when somebody has a, a traumatic brain injury, yeah. they, the, the, one of the telltale signs is they do these claw things with their hands because they can't ra- their mind can't wrap around what happened. Mm-hmm. And so their body starts doing weird things. And as soon as I heard it, on the radio, they're like, oh, he's holding his fingers in front of his face. I'm yeah. like, that guy got his egg scrambled really, really bad. And um, But it was just a, a game before where he was knocked down and then he tried to get up and he physically was like, yeah. just to see him suffer like that, they need to the, the figure it out. The to, protocol to, to keep these athletes mentally safe yeah. has got to be increased. And it's uh, it, it, the bottom line is we see any of our youth athletes go through something like that. They are sitting for weeks, yeah. not just a little bit of time to try and get your team to the playoffs. It's pretty sad. All right. So the latest viral trend on TikTok, it is showing people tanning their buttholes. Uh, it's called perennium sunning, and it's the latest craze. Mm. And it has is this sexy or nasty? <laughs> this is awful. Okay. If I walked outside and saw anybody doing that, you just gotta have ass up. You have to, sh- yes, full contact with UV rays to that area. And Did you get burned really fast. There? You do it only for three minutes, and it helps lead to better sleep, more energy, and then <laughs> a higher libido. No, does that cancel does itself that. out? It does none of that. Some guy said, I want to see how many hot moms in my neighborhood. I'm going to start a hashtag on TikTok. Let's see how many people will sun their perennium sunning. Oh, my God. I just can't with that. Gross. What's Halloween about? Costumes and candy. Don't you know what happens on Halloween? Make them give you candy. Everyone that we know is just giving out candy. What an awesome Halloween. We're going for name candy only this year. Just hit the bag, we hit the road. That's the way it works. I might be the Tootsie Roll house with the numbers up like this. Halloween candy expected to rise in price by 34% this year due to supply chain issues. But every store has... Candy out, just expect to pay a little bit more. And then just shut off your light when you're all out. And that is what's trending. Radio paparazzi. The pooping must still be an issue for Lil Nas X. He was doing a concert in Atlanta when he left his microphone on. I'm on backstage, and this is like not part of the show, but I'm taking a mean sh- <laughs> The God. mean one? Gross. I'll be right back. This is not part of the show. Yeah. But I'll be right back. I'm doing a grumpy. We have like interlude music that can just be on loop while he does what he has to do. That's so gross. You do. Yeah. Vanilla Ice. This is really hard to hear because we have two of some of the biggest icons in music touring, Vanilla Ice and Coolio, and he is talking about how he was just with him. We were all together just last weekend, man. I mean, it was just a couple days ago, and uh, I never thought the last performance of his life would be on stage with me. I was just honored that he was up there with me, and we were friends. The last conversation, that's why I'm so emotional because he was telling me how much he missed his kids, how great his kids were, and that, that you know, he's so proud of all of them. To see a uh, legendary hip hop artist like Coolio just talking about how awesome his kids are yeah. on the road and not worrying about the next concert or anything else like that, that, that we're going to miss that guy. It's really sad. And he was at that age. It's weird to think about people at that, like Snoop Dogg is a grandfather. It's weird to think about that. All right, so Jason Bateman, he is one of the best storytellers out there, and he tells a story about uh, running over Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson. Ricky Schroeder and I almost ran over Michael Jackson with our bicycles. Um, (laughs) This is while we were doing Silver Spoons at Universal, and we'd need to have our bikes because kids got to play. And Michael was there to see him. To uh, He was... I don't listen. Hey. 
he was a fan of the show and a fan of the Ricker. <laughs> and uh, he, he was coming onto the stage while we were zooming off and uh, almost took him down. Wow. <laughs> That's crazy. Isn't that wild? So you won't ever hear like stories like that anymore. Like we have. Because the news breaks immediately. Hollywood. Well, it, it, but it, it's it's one day. Yeah. Like he held on to this story now for 30 years. Yeah. And I'm so sad that Ozark is probably never coming back. No, they won't. They won't make it happen. You kill off Ruth and you're done. <gasps> Unless you haven't seen that one. But she dies at the end. All right. Blowing out their candles today. We have re- uh, rapper ASAP Rocky turning 34. Ashley Simpson is 38. Sean William Scott is 46. Have you seen the previews for Welcome to Flatch on Fox? No. If you like community. Sean William Scott got another network TV office. gig? No. He, he. It's his. He's producing it. No way. It is. It's so funny. Oh, my God. It's so deadpan. They break that third wall. It's perfect. So check it out. They all have birthdays today. The Playhouse podcast is made possible thanks to Bradshaw and Brian Law Offices. Catch the live show weekdays from 530 to 9 on 1047 KCLD. Now, share this with a friend.